Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Bellevue City Council meeting. It is Tuesday, November 2nd, 2021 at 6 p.m. Uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance, and if you would remain standing for the invocation with Father Tom Jones uh, from Church of the Holy Spirit. Um, and then during that invocation, if you just keep the families of some of our lost uh, public servants um, recently in, in mind, that would be awesome. Uh, and I'm just kind of referring to uh, Mary Inez Boyd not too long ago, Bruce Sorensen, former city council member, Chuck Frederick, uh, former city council member, and uh, longtime public works, uh, George Grant. So. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Heavenly Father, as we gather to conduct the business of us, our city, we do so seeking your guidance and your blessing. Give our city council members discerning hearts as they listen to those who witness about the issues at hand and enable those who approach the council to state clearly their thoughts and concerns so that our council may fully understand and properly assess the community impact of the options before them. Guide our council to make wise decisions in the work they do this day that the choices they make are with right intentions, with the mind towards the proper stewardship of the public resources they have been entrusted with, and in the best interest of those they serve. Enable all present to see that what we hold in common as citizens of our fine city is more important than our differences, so that working together we might make a difference in the lives of those we encounter along our journey and those who depend upon us to act faithfully and responsibly. Finally, Lord, bless all those who gather in this place, that they may know your love and grace, and knowing it, embrace it, share it, and let it be what guides us as a community towards right relationship with you and one another. And in closing, dear Lord, we lift up those names that our good mayor has said into your loving care. Watch over them, care for them, send your spirit of peace upon those who love them. Help them know that you are with them always. Amen. Thank you, Father Jones. I'll call the meeting to order. Susan, would you take roll call, please? Councilman Stinson. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman McCaw. Here. Councilman Preister. Here. Councilman Burns. Here. And Councilwoman Welsh. Here. Thank you. Thank you. This meeting will be run in accordance with the Nebraska Open Meetings Act. A copy of that act is located on the rear wall of the council chambers. Item five, approval of agenda, consent agenda, claims and advisory committee reports. 5A, approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion? Councilman Stenson? Make motion we approve the agenda. Second. Motion by Stenson, second by Burns. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, item 5B, approval of the consent agenda. Items marked with an asterisk are approved where this item is unless otherwise removed. Do I have a motion for the consent? Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor, I'll make a motion. We approve the consent agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Cook, second by Welch. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, item seven, special presentations. We have none. Item eight, organizational matters, 8A. Approve the cancellation of the January 4th, 2022 city count. Oh, I'm sorry, that was on consent. So we will go to nine. Uh, approved citizen communications, we have none this evening. Item 10, liquor licenses, we have none this evening. Item 11, ordinances for adoption, third reading, 11A, ordinance number 4061, request to rezone lots one and two, Coons Edition, replat one, being a replat of lot one, Coons Edition from RA to RE, for the purpose of single family residential development. Applicant Alice Coons, general location 10507 Cedar Island Road. Susan, would you read that ordinance, please? 
Ordinance number 4061, an ordinance to amend the official zoning map of the City of Bellevue, Nebraska, as provided for by Article 3 of Ordinance number 3619, by changing the zone classification of land located at or about 10507 Cedar Island Road, more particularly described in Section 1 of the ordinance and to provide an effective date. Thank you. Do I have a motion? Councilwoman Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make a motion that we approve ordinance number 4061. Second. Motion by Welch, second by Preister. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, 11A1 request to small subdivision plat lots one and two, Kuntz edition, replat one, and I'll take a motion. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion we approve agenda item 11A1. Second. Motion by Cook, second by Preister. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, 11A2, waiver of section 6-7, seven, subdivision regulations. And do I have a motion? Councilwoman Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make a motion that we approve item 11A2. Second. Motion by Welch, second by McCaw. Comments or questions? Oops. Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. 12, we have no ordinances for public hearing this evening. 13, ordinances for introduction, there are none. Item 14, public hearing on matters other than ordinances. 14A, approval of a request of the Bellevue Economic Enhancement Foundation, Bellevue Chamber of Commerce, Marathon Ventures, and Salvation Army to hold the annual Salvation Army Big Red Kettle Kickoff celebration with a special fireworks display provided by Bellino Fireworks out 901 Fort Crook Road North on Friday, November 5th, 2021 from 5.30 p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. Fireworks 7.30 to 7.45 p.m. And I'll take a motion. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, we're gonna open that for public hearing. So item 14A is now open for public hearing if anyone would like to speak for or against. Anyone that would like to speak, please come forward. I'll close the public hearing and do I have a motion now? Councilwoman Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion that we approve item 14A as read. Second. Motion by Welch, second by Preister. Any comments or questions? Councilwoman Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to invite the public to come to this. I've been doing it for several years, and uh, Marathon Ventures does a great job with this, uh, promotes a great organization, the Salvation Army, and the fireworks there are just uh, as good as Fourth of July, if not better, and it goes to a great cause. I'll second that statement. Any other comments? All right, motion by Welch, second by Preister. Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you. Item five, uh, 15, resolutions, 15A. Resolution number 2021-40, paying agent resolution. Do I have a motion? Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion we approve resolution 20, 21-40. I'll second that. Motion by Cook, second by Welch. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, 16 is current business. 16B, accept and authorize the mayor to sign the proposal for the demolition of the structures located at 3636 Edna Street, Bellevue, Nebraska, 68147. 
And yeah, do I have a motion? Councilman Stenson. Make motion we approve 16B. I'll second that. Motion by Stenson, second by Welch. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Item 16C, accept and authorize the mayor to sign the proposal for the demolition of the structures located at 708 East La Platte Road, Bellevue, Nebraska. And do I have a motion? Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move to approve item 16C. Second. Motion by Preister, second by McCaw. Comments or questions? Please vote. Voting yes, motion carries. Thank you. Item 16D, accept and authorize the mayor to sign the proposal for the demolition of the structures located at 720 East La Platte Road, Bellevue, Nebraska, 68147. Uh, motion, Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion we approve 16D. Second. Motion by Cooks, seconded by Stenson. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, item 16E, approve and authorize the mayor to sign the easements between City of Bellevue and Omaha Development Foundation in the amount of $1,810 for temporary easement and $490 for permanent easement to equal a total cost of $2,300 for the new South Lift Station, Brown River Lift Station Improvements and Force Mains Project. Do I have a motion? Councilman Stenson. Make a motion we approve 16E. Second. Motion by Stenson, second by Burns. Discussion or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you. Item 17, administration reports. Comments must be limited to items on the current reports. Monthly reports are given at the first council meeting of each month. October report is attached to the council packet. Any comments or questions on those? Councilman Stenson. Uh, uh, Jimmy, if you could comment on the uh, letter from the World Herald. Sure. There was a public record request from the World Herald uh, regarding our Old Town development, any type of community. I think you saw in the letter there was communication between the mayor, um, the developer, both developers, uh, Jeff Gehring, Robbie, and then of course John Jungers, any type of communication that went in between them in a period of time, I think it was over the last two years. So we complied with that record request. I believe Channel 7 also was inquiring. So it's um, somewhere along the line, it's, I don't know if this is, you know, like a mudslinging contest to see if there is any type of connection with the mayor to the development, which the city does not see that. Um, all the emails have been turned over, uh, any type of, I think we had one text message, everything was turned over to the World Herald. There was really nothing within there that would conflict with the mayor. Of course, that's up to the World Herald and ultimately the Channel 7, whatever they want to report. But from the city's perspective, we don't see any conflict of interest with the mayor but we'll continue to comply with any type of requests that are out there. Channel 7 uh, canceled their appointment and they were going to reschedule, but they never have yet. So I haven't heard anything back from them. And just these people's minds, I have no connection with that, with that accusation. So Councilman Stinson, do you have something? Or Price Price. Price. Yes, thank you, Mayor. A couple of things I'd like to do. We received a packet of information anonymously uh, for the second time and it's unfortunate we can't respond to it and it's about our cemetery which is on the agenda also in two places so it's certainly open to discuss i'd like the administrator to maybe give us an update on what's happening and maybe how we can respond if at all to this 
Certainly, that's actually, I think we've had four incidents of packets being dropped off without any contact with the individual that leaves them, which we'd love to have the dialogue with the individuals that are leaving. We usually will find them sitting outside of our door or the clerk's office will bring them up. Um, some of the pictures that are in there are two and three years old. So we have old pictures, Those a lot of those have been remedied. Some of the newer ones, we have some concerns and this was what we'd like to have a conversation with when they, some of the really old markers from the 1800s, we don't have the ability to clean those without destroying them. There's a lot of discussion about that is why don't we do that? Well, we're not going to clean it and destroy it. And in some cases, it's up to the individuals to take care of their markers. So we try to work closely with the families we had one, Doug, correct me if I'm wrong, we had one marker that was it had been topped over for the better part of a couple of years. We were going to fix it, and the family told us not to touch it. So it's, again, at their wishes. But when you go through mo most of those pictures, um, this summer we had some issues with grass cutting. Uh, we were cutting a little bit short. I think we've looked on the outside for some recommendations on what kind of grass to put in there to ensure that how we manage that cemetery um, is proper. We have a lot of shaded areas, a lot of sun areas, so it's it's a little bit of a balance. And then um, you go through a drought period too, you have some concerns there. So it's, they may or may not cut it too short. So they have taken measures to ensure they're cutting it better, um, delaying some of the cutting, and then how they manage around the markers. But our guys seriously take that. Uh, Jason Hotelling is our caretaker, and he does a fantastic job for us. He takes it very seriously. So w when you see this type of material dropped off, sometimes there is a backstory to that. We'd love to have that conversation. Kind of breaks our heart to think that we've forgotten people in our cemetery because they do an extraordinary amount of work to keep our cemetery up kept. And Doug, I don't know if you want to add anything to that, but. I know we meet regularly over any type of issues that we may have in there. And these guys do take a lot of pride in it. But um, if the public is out there listening to this, the individual that are bringing those photos in, let's have a discussion because I would like to address that. Good. Thank you for that update. And I, I think it's appropriate they're also pointing out as we approach Veterans Day that they're showing that there is a veteran and that maybe some of these graves are veterans, and it's no disrespect to any veteran. We do an excellent job of taking care of our cemetery, and of we spend a lot of time writing old markers, putting them back up, getting the cemetery in good shape over a number of years. So I think our staff's done an exceptional job, and it's unfortunate, but we get pictures of things that are anonymous, and we can't even do anything to get the word back to them. So this is the best attempt we can besides doing the work, and the work is being done. When we had, was it two weeks ago, Doug, we had a intoxicated driver run through our cemetery and took out a few markers, did some damage. Um, you know, an unfortunate incident like that, of course, then we've got to clean up after him, but yeah, we don't really experience a lot of vandalism within there, and I wouldn't even call this vandalism, just somebody driving through inebriated, but you see that, and that's disheartening to any to any family that sees their, their marker or their plot damage like that. So uh, our guys try to address it as quickly as possible. We went through, I think, two years ago where some of the graves, the way they were settling, we went out and bought a tamper to ensure that we can get the... the, the um, plot itself tamped down quick enough to where it doesn't we weren't waiting for it to settle which was causing some problem getting grass growing in it and our guys mowing it so that tamper has been a big improvement and I, th I think we should also mention the the new kiosk that yes. the city has spent roughly a hundred thousand on uh, installing so people can locate their loved ones in the cemetery and we just spent $105,000 on new concrete and pavement uh, for better access and a uh, smoother ride, I guess. Uh, so when you do visit your loved ones, um, I think the city of Bellevue has focused a great deal on making sure the cemetery is presentable and respectful um, and will continue to do so. Thank you. Thanks, one last thing I would add, too, we've got some large old oak trees in the cemetery, and unfortunately, they're diseased and dying, 
And so we've had to spend a sizable amount of money removing some of those oak trees and may do more. But that's not cheap to bring heavy equipment in to protect all of those markers and all of those graves so those heavy branches aren't doing damage. So I think the city has done an exceptional job. And having worked as a caretaker in cemeteries in high school, I know some of that work personally. And I'm, I'm glad we have that tamper because that did save us a lot of time back then. And it's very useful to stop that settling. So I, I think we've done an excellent job. Moving on to the second thing. Do you want to reply? No, no, okay. I'll wait. Did you want to say something about this? The, the second thing I'd like to ask about, we have the Bellevue Bridge Commission and the Bellevue Bridge that's on the administrator's report. I think we've got an exceptional bridge commission who has managed the bridge very well who have managed the finances for the bridge very well. They have done assessments of it. They have gotten done improvements and safety measures to repair the bridge, but it is an old bridge and it does need repairs. And they too are taking a leadership role on that. So Mr. Ristow, if you could maybe also give us a little update on the recent meeting and any things that have been happening with the bridge and the bridge commission, please. Certainly, so they've been working closely with MAPA too as a partner on the bridge. And I think Mayor, yourself, Mr. Pricer, you guys are involved in the commission here and their task force. And one of the long-term discussions, um, initially the Highway 34 bridge was going to be the only bridge. And then if you recall during the 2019 flood, our bridge was the most important thing within probably a hundred mile stretch because to the south they were flooded out. So accessibility was really important. Highway 34's bridge was underwater. So Bellevue Bridge actually rose to the level of a higher importance. And we recognized then that I think um, taking that bridge out of service would be a detriment to our community as well as across the river to their community. So they've done a lot of work on the backdrop. A lot of discussions have been, what do we do? And in the short order of this is um, to build a new bridge using the, the, the what do I, what's piers. the, the piers oh, that are already in there without taking out the old bridge. Apparently there's some things with the core that we have, we're required to do with the bridge, but our goal long-term is to replace that bridge with a new bridge uh, and not, not lose that connectivity on the other side. Within that, the, the question was, would the city take the bridge? Uh, because funding, this, they're not asking the city to fund it. There'll be state and federal <laughs> dollars that'll go to the replacement of that bridge. It's just that they can't fund that without the city owning it. So the Bridge Commission ultimately will deed the bridge back to the city. Um, and then the money that they have reserved will go towards the, the building of a new bridge or maintenance of the existing bridge if we do something different with that. but. Our goal is to replace that bridge and start looking for the funding sources within the next couple of years here. I think it had, um, was it an, another 20 year shelf life? But in that 20 years then is to work to secure the funding and secure the permits and the like to replace that bridge. So probably not in our lifetime we'll see it, but in the next generation they'll see a, a new bridge go in there. And, and from the city's perspective is we support that endeavor uh, we're not going to be burdened with any additional cost um, except to maintain the bridge. I think um, Rich, was it a couple thousand a year, I think was the the manageable amount that they, they said it would take on a new bridge to, to maintain it, which uh, whether it's plowing, um, patching potholes or whatever the case might be, we can manage that certainly without any risk to us. But connectivity, I think we're good. So. I think it's more like 30, 30,000 a year for all the inspections on average. Is that so? The bridge inspections the that were initial, but I think the actual maintenance. I think that was every two year. They were, they were talking about a two year cycle for inspections. And uh, so I the bridge think. commission would actually build the bridge. The city would not be involved. And then when the, built, when the bridge is built, then it would be turned over to the city and the city would take over the maintenance of it at that point in time. So. We just have to it. commit to that in advance. If we can get to that point, that would be yes. a good situation for Bellevue. And we're kind of wanting to get something going on it because the environmentalists alone take 
three to five years. So if we can at least get those started, that'll be save and us a little time. The Bridge Commission is working on getting that environmental assessment of the area. We're in good position. It requires less assessment because it's an existing bridge and there are existing piles <laughs> in the river already. So we're in a good position there. Uh, the Bridge Commission members did go down to Lincoln and meet with the director of the Department of Transportation and others, and they were favorable. So that was in our favor because unless the state is willing to advance it and put it in their list of projects they want done, it doesn't go very far because the state will be contributing to the cost share. And then the bulk of the money will be federal money but fortunately, the Bridge Commission has already saved up enough money that much of and maybe all of what Bellevue would have to pay is already set aside. So again, kudos to the Bridge Commission and our finance director really loves those numbers because somebody else paying for it and us getting the bridge is pretty nice. So I think we're doing very well on it. Uh, this is just an update. It is an ongoing process. Meetings will continue to happen, and MAPA will continue to be involved, uh, as the mayor said. So uh, I think if anybody has questions as, as we meet, we'll keep you updated as time goes on. It's possibly that the toll goes away with the ah, new yes. bridge, so there won't be a toll bridge anymore. Good. The toll was basically there to pay for the bridge. Now that the bridge is paid for, and if we get all of the state and federal and bridge commission money, there wouldn't be any bonded indebtedness, there wouldn't be any debt, and so there wouldn't be a reason to have any kind of a toll on the bridge anymore. Thank you. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanna real quickly, also in our administrative reports, what is what material that appears at Mayor Hike presented at the mayor's forum, which happens in Sarpy County with the county and the mayors of the other cities. And I just wanna say the information in that thing is excellent. Uh, it's multiple pages, but it gathers a lot of good information about our growth, about our strong financial position, about where our taxes and taxes money go, talks about improvements and things that have happened in our police and fire departments, the streets, the parks, the cemetery, the housing development that have been occurring around Bellevue. And I would just encourage anybody that would wanna look at the administrative report. I think that report's about 20, 30 pages long. It is a lot of good information. And what really the public sees is probably our parks and our roads and a lot of activity, a lot of money, a lot of new things have been added to the parks and stuff. I just wanna, the only reason why I wanna talk about it is I think it, Anybody in the public, they would, would want to see what's been happening in the city. Most of it recently. Um, it's an excellent report, and things are moving in the right direction, and the city's in very good position. So thank you. That was a fun presentation to give. So thank you for all your hard work <laughs> on getting us there, because uh, it, it, takes, it takes a village, and we're right here. So. I also want to coattail on that. If you ever had the opportunity to go to the mayor's forum, you ought to do it because uh, there were seven mayors there representing seven dis different cities, and I was proud to be able to say that I was part of the Bellevue um, organization because the presentation was outstanding, and um, the, the mayor did a great job, and it's because of him and Mr. Risto's leadership that we are truly in this, and the, and the department heads and the rest of us. I mean, I know it takes a village, but it takes a leader to get the whole thing started. I also wanted to give some appreciation to the um, fire chief and the police chief because they both had their award ceremonies um, within the last couple of weeks and recognizing the awards, promotions, and recognition of all of our um, police officers and firefighters uh, doing a great job for our city as well. Thank you. Anything else? All right, thanks for those comments. Um, those will be entered into the record. There is no closed session, so I'll take a motion for adjournment. Councilman Stenson. Make motion, we adjourn. Second.
Motion by Stenson, second by Cook. Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Charlie was 